Hello everyone, welcome back for another episode of Liquor CEO TV. I'm Charles Vaughn, and today's topic, trademarks and intellectual property. It's not the most sexy of topics, but it's a very important topic. A lot of times my clients and a lot of folks I run into in the space, they'll ask me, so what do we do to protect this brand name and look and, and such that we create? Well, the answer to that is trademarks. So we're gonna talk a little bit today about trademarks. Uh, first, a little legal. This is not meant to be official legal advice. This is merely introductory um, information into the world of trademarks and intellectual property. Uh, trademarks, patents, copyrights, they kind of fall under the same intellectual property area of federal law. Uh, so we're gonna focus predominantly on trademarks, which is for this conversation will be the name of your business, the logo of your business, and perhaps the stylized version of your brand name. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about intellectual property. Intellectual property is exactly kind of what it sounds like. It's property that you create uh, from a creative or intellectual point of view. For copyrights, it could be songs. Uh, for patents, it could be machines and processes. Well, for brands, it's typically uh, the name of the company, or the name of the brand, not the company, but the name of the brand and how that brand looks. Nike, the swoosh. Nike would be trademarked as a name, a trade name, uh, uh, trademarked the name, and then the actual swoosh would be the logo that you could actually uh, trademark as well. So we'll get into that. So one of the things I want to bring out up front is that trademark in and of itself doesn't necessarily prohibit anyone else from trying to look like your brand. Uh, having a trademark certainly adds substance to your defense pool of having the right to that stylized look, name, brand, etc. cetera. Um, but it doesn't necessarily prohibit anyone else from going out and doing it. There, there are bad actors out there that will steal. I think China, uh, we see it all the time on the news. China steals trademarks, intellectual property, whether it's patents, whether it's machine uh, patents, uh, whether it could be brand names and making fakes. Uh, they do that. Uh, other people do. I, don't, I just want to say just the Chinese do it, but it, it's just general in nature. People will do that. So what the trademark, the registered trademark actually will do is lend a little credence to your legal stake, your legal claim to that name. So in other chapters, I've mentioned that when you're considering a brand name, you would just get on Google and pop it in and see what pops up. That actually is something officially it's called a common law search. It's, it's just uh, it, who else is out there using it? Because if somebody is out there using XYZ brand as a name and, and, and they made a craft beer out of it and you want to make a craft gin, um, and they started using it in 2001 and it's documented there, perhaps they would have a common law right to that name that you would be barred from using it. And your use of it, even though you may be able to register it because they haven't, may be common lawed out and, and they would have a legal right to the name that they've used. Now there's some qualifiers in there. Getting a trade name, a trademark, and a service mark like that doesn't necessarily mean that you have it forever in perpetuity you actually have to use the mark in commerce. You have to substantiate the use in commerce, whether it's vis-a-vis -vis the registration process or if, even from a common law perspective. So what I'm saying is if you find somebody in 2001 that's used a brand name uh, that you want to use, but they've abandoned it <clears throat> and haven't used it, it's quite possible you may be able to assume that abandonment and use the name. You might have a right to be able to pick up and go. Uh, so there are things that, that need to be done in terms of the technical searches of that and maybe reaching out or doing some more due diligence and more research, but there's where we go with that. So to get around the round, let's just talk about two or three things here real quick. We have a brand name and we then we're going to have a certain stylized look to that name and then we're going to have a logo. Those are typically what you find when you go into the world of, of creating a, a distilled spirits brand. So the name of the product, XYZ, whatever it is, you can actually trademark the name, not how it looks, not how it's stylized, that's called stylized, the art, you know, using a unique font or something like that, how it looks, that's something else, but just the name in and of itself, you can actually trademark that name in a class, if it's a spirit, it's class 33. So you can actually trademark the name. 
Again, this is all predicated on the fact that you've done your common law searches and all the other searches you may want to do, but you can actually trademark the name. The second thing is maybe you use a, a specific font or something for that brand name that you want to use. You can actually also trademark the stylized version of that name. So you'll have to submit or you'll have to submit either a statement of, in, of use uh, or uh, in, intent to use or a statement of intent to use or whatever it's officially called, but you'll have to do that too. But you can actually get the process started to show that you have your stylized name uh, trademarked as well. And the final piece is if you have a logo, something unique that's not part of the name, but it's a logo, you can actually trademark that look, that logo as well. This is kind of unique where it gets tricky. You may want to do two or three versions of that particular mark because you maybe want the mark, the logo in and of itself trademarked, and then you're going to want the logo with the brand name stylized in in the in the uh, in the use imagery uh, trademarked as well. So that way you have a little flexibility in being able to use just the logo and have you know trademark protection, and then the logo plus the brand name trademark protected. So. The question here is why would you want to trademark the name, the stylized artistic version of the brand name, and then also the logo? Well, for for the, the, the low-hanging fruit answer is to have as much protection as possible when you're uh, using the brand in commerce to, to, to protect against uh, copycats, number one. <clears throat> number two, um, the, 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 the Name, the brand name itself is very important. You don't want someone else to be able to use your brand name and make it look totally different in spirits. Now, there's some argument as to whether that could legally be done or not, but if you have the trademark on just the name in that class, at least you're, you've taken a big step in the trademark, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO, not issuing another trademark to somebody else, even though they may make it look totally different. There's that. The, for stylizing the art, is really cool because, or the stylized version of your brand name, because then not only could somebody else possibly not even get your name, but more importantly, they couldn't use that look for your, your brand name, XYZ, in pretty much any other industry. So I want to throw Apple computer out there real quick. So the Apple uh, icon, the Apple with a little bite out of it. If I wanted to make Apple Gen, you know, I could probably get Apple Gin the word, Apple, for class 33. Potentially, I could get that trademarked. There's no way I would be able to use an Apple on my label, on my as part of my look and livery, because it would confuse the consumers to think that Apple, the big computer company, is part of this particular gin. And that's the confusion that the patents and trademarks and such like that actually seek to avoid. Uh, so that's the protective element of it. They seek to avoid the confusion in the marketplace. So same concept. If you trademark your stylized version, nobody could use your stylized version of your name in a non-related business period. I think the trademark office would really kind of have a, a problem with that and they wouldn't issue the mark in the first place. And then, of course, the logo, same concept back and forth. So uh, to kind of round this about here, uh, the the... It's very important to trademark your name in your class of your spirit, uh, which is 33. And then it's also important to trademark your stylized version of your name if you use a unique font or kind of like an artistic element of writing it out, script, cursive, a unique font or something like that so that it doesn't look, uh, so no one's gonna use that font and use your name in a different uh, product category. And then of course, if you have a logo, let's go ahead and get that trademark too. Um, and then we could, you know, we could talk about, you know, two, three, four applications for the trademark with the logo because you're going to want those protective things packaged together so that the package is protective. Not using one without the other doesn't doesn't mean you're not protected if you do it the right way. Um, at fifty thousand feet, uh, these trademark applications online, if you do them yourself, the fee, the fee is two twenty five. Uh, you have to be prepared for a lot of questions that you may be going on Google and trying to figure out the answers. I don't want to discount the 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 value that trademark attorneys bring to the table. Um, that, that's it, it is important to really uh, get your trademark solidified in the right way. Uh, but it is by no stretch of the imagination something that you couldn't uh, reach out and do for yourself and figure out. Um, I have a tax law background, so it's a little different for me in terms of reading regulatory items and things like that. So 
Uh, I like the West in a nutshell series for intellectual property. I keep them for estate and gift planning for personal, etc. But the intellectual property module of any book, any treatise, any book will serve you well in understanding uh, what's going on in, in this world and maybe help you through that process. Uh, mostly, I think attorneys are good for on the back end, if there is a problem, to get them involved with the beginning process of challenges, cease and desist letters, uh, and if litigation forthcoming from that, you know, making the decision, if is it, is it worth suing somebody, how have they gained from it financially, how have you been harmed from it, can you collect on them, a lot of other things in that regard. Um, I, I'm surprised at how many questions I do get in the intellectual property arena as a consultant, uh, over at 4080 Spirits, I'm the lead consultant, so we do get a lot of questions thrown our way, and they usually start with the trademark issue of the brand. Uh, you do not need to have a trademark to start a brand. Uh, that can be that's part of the process. Uh, I definitely, I definitely believe you should trademark anything you create, uh, brand names. That's there's just nothing wrong with that. Um, so we can go on from there. Uh, I hope this chapter was at least introductorily helpful for you in the world of trademarks and copyrights and such, mostly trademarks, because that's what we really talked about. <clears throat> um, uh, if you like the video, please uh, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more uh, chapters I'll be producing and putting up on Lair, and lit the little bell for the alert notifications so that you can be alerted when the next chapters are up there. As always, liquor.ceo liquor at gmail.com. If you have any questions, 40-80spirits.com. You can reach me there. A lot more information there. Uh, comment below if you have any suggestions or questions. As always, feel free to reach out to me directly via email. I hope this video finds you well. Uh, we're getting ready for the new year. So I'm trying to get a lot of content up because a lot of people have goals for 2020. They want to get out and start their own business and such. I'm all for it. Uh, share the video, share the word, let them know that this free information is out there. And as always, if anyone has any questions, I'm here to answer them for you. Thanks a lot. Bottoms up. Cheers. Here's to 2020. <laughs>